Today we are going to watch The Continental, from the world of John Wick, Episode 2, Night 2, Loyalty to the Master, begins with an answer to the question, what did the Scott brothers do for Cormac when they were young? Well, it turns out they did a lot of things, after putting their family on the streets, Cormac used them like errand boys. They were caught for throwing a Molotov through a window and starting a fire in someone's apartment. Winston was the one who did the deed after begging. Frankie to let him. But he had no idea that there were people inside. In the present day, Frankie's body is put through the incinerator as Lou and Miles look on, in a flashback, we see how Yen and Frankie met. The bizarre circumstances are emblematic of the John Wick universe's complex moral fabric. Yen is being punished by her husband for not being able to give him a son. He maintains that Yen's task, to commit suicide bombing, is not punishment but part of her destiny. But as fate would have it, the bomb does not go off, even as Yen tries repeatedly. After she gives up, her eyes lock with Frankie and the rest is history. She is still recovering from her wounds, Mayhew goes to KDS apartment to apologize. She is still upset over his interceding. He overhears KD get a call from someone telling her Frankie's location. Whom is he loyal to is a question we cannot answer right now. Lou explains to Winston that Frankie did not give Cormac the coin press, which doesn't surprise him. But he doesn't know where the artifact is. Instead, he proposes an alliance to Lou Reed, help him kill Cormac and take over the Continental, and the gun trade is theirs. Before they can answer, Yen waltzes into the room where everyone is standing around Frankie's urn. Upon seeing it, she charges toward Winston, even if it is with half her strength. She is clearly upset but there is nothing that can be done now. Ezra, the coroner's assistant, burned Frankie's body outside his normal course of business. That is why KD doesn't find Frankie's body in the morgue. But she strongholds him into getting the address where Frankie's ashes were taken, the adjudicator visits Cormac and gives him three days to find the press. If he isn't able to do that, the high table will replace him with a successor. To storm a castle, you need an army. But Winston doesn't have one, yet. He does have the money to build one, though, and that is exactly what the trio aims to do next. Lou recruits his father. Old friend, Jean, who is an average marksman but stoutly righteous and a sworn enemy of Cormac's. Winston goes to the Bowery to meet with Maisie and convinces her to join hands with him. Cormac steps up the efforts to find the press, whose location no one knows. He sends his people to the old theater and trailers in the scrap place. But the press isn't to be found, he tails Winston to the Bowery meeting, which does not go as expected for Winston. He keeps pressing the wrong buttons to convince. Maisie, who isn't easily bought with money. He discovers a whole underground network that showcases the formidable operation Maisie runs. Yen hands over a rough sketch of the Continental that Frankie made, although it is still unclear if she will join hands with Winston. But if her heart-wrenching conversation with Lu where he talks about Vietnam is any metric, Yen will be storming the Continental as well, Jean explains to Winston one of the most important rules of the Continental, no killing. On premises. But there is an exception. There is a red button that Cormac can press which can suspend that rule and their plan to kill him, Winston wants to target Sharon as his inside man. He bribes a public bus driver to take the bus that contains Sharon and Lou to a place where they can talk. He offers Sharon his freedom from Cormac, the old bully has spoiled the lives of countless people like Winston and Sharon, whom he disposes of after their purpose to him is served. We see an unfortunate instance of that unfold right in front of our eyes as a cellist, Thomas, who was hired to play at the hotel, is brutally murdered by Cormac when he learns that the boy will be leaving to pursue higher education, when Sharon returns to the continent and he sees Thomas's dead body on the carpet, his mind is made up. Cormac says that he wants to replace the boy with Karen's father, who plays the violin. Sharon blurts out the truth to Cormac about Winston's plan. He wants to remain loyal to Cormac. Or does he?